So in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you about the top eight things that you should be putting into your outdoor kitchen. It can be a bit of a minefield out there looking for all the different products, the different appliances. So if you're in the process of having a kitchen done or you're thinking about having one done, this is the video for you. So the first thing that you want to be thinking about for your outdoor kitchen is something to cook on. This is always the heart of the kitchen. Um, and you have a few um, options here. So the first one is to go for a gas grill. Um, now these gas grills, there are lots of different shapes, lots of different sizes. They generally come in three, four or five burners. So choosing that will depend on how many people you're looking at feeding. Some of the barbecues, the gas barbecues can run on natural gas as well. So if you do have a source of natural gas nearby, it might be worth looking at the ones that you can hook up direct, save you having to change the gas tanks. So the benefits of a gas grill would be that they are convenient. A lot of people find it very easy just to come out, turn the, the gas on and you know, with a few minutes you're, you're ready to start cooking. Um, a lot of the, the newer ones have lights, they have rotisseries, they have infrared back burners, um, thing, uh, burners for searing as well, which is, which is really, really good. You can get, uh, the majority of them are, are stainless steel griddles. You can also get cast iron hot plates and, and griddles that will go in there, which are very good for searing steaks and things like that. So next we have the pellet grills. Now we offer the Traeger pellet grills, which are um, the leaders in this in this field, in my opinion. They are absolutely brilliant. So you didn't used to be able to build them in, but Traeger have now released the Timberline XL and the Timberline series of pellet grills, which allow you to build them in. So these are barbecues, they're grills, and they run on wood pellets. So there are lots of different flavors, you know, apple, cherry, hickory, mesquite, um, lots and lots of different flavors. And you pour the pellets into a hopper. This is on the side of the barbecue, and that is what fuels it. So that's what gives it that smoke. Uh, it gives it that smoky flavor, and that's what cooks it. So the pellet grills are plugged in, so you're going to need an electrical source. So you plug them in. And it's just like a, a normal oven that you would have inside. So you can set the temperature to whatever you want. Very, very good for slow cooking, doing briskets and ribs, pulled pork, things like that. But also getting up to high temperatures, good for searing and, and you know, pizzas and things like that. They've got lots of accessories um, to use for that, including a pizza oven that you can go, that you can put in there. Um, they are fantastic with the technology so they come with an app so you can put your food in there you can set it to whatever temperature you want and then you can go out and spend the day shopping or doing whatever you want to do and you can control that temperature from anywhere you like on the app on your phone the Traeger also comes with a an induction hob as part of it, which can be set down into the worktop. This is really good for, again, searing things and boiling things. Uh, it comes, you can get a cast iron tray that comes with it for cooking like vegetables, prawns, steaks, anything like that. So that's a really helpful addition to the, uh, the Traeger Timberline, to the pellet grill. So your next option would be a charcoal barbecue. Now we generally use the Kamado ovens. We use the monolith Kamado ovens, which are the egg um, ceramic ovens that you may have seen online. You may have seen pictures of them. These are really, really good. So they are incredibly efficient. So they are a ceramic oven that once they get up to heat, they retain the heat and they use uh, very little charcoal. So they're, they're cheap to run. They also have a huge range of things that they can cook up. They're very versatile. So they will allow you to grill, to smoke, to bake, to roast, to slow cook. Um, you can cook pizzas on there, bread, meats, vegetables. And they all have that distinctive smoky flavor. You can add different woods, cherry, hickory, oak. Um, and that gives it that lovely, lovely barbecue flavor. The uh, the monoliths, you know, if you want to smoke a brisket or something like that, you can put them in overnight. They will go for 14, 15 hours and you won't have to um, top up the fuel or anything like that. They're very, very economical. Uh, they're very durable. Um, there's no, well, on the monoliths, there are some stale, stainless steel banding, but everything else is ceramic. So they're very good um, for the outdoors. And obviously they've got a lid that keeps it closed and keeps it watertight. Um, they look very good as well. We always drop them into a, a lowered section in our kitchens. You can um, you can cut a hole into the top of the worktop and drop them in that way, or you can just have it um, open on a, on a lowered shelf. Either way, it looks really good, and they're always a good uh, complement to any outdoor kitchen. 
So the next is a pizza oven. So there are lots and lots of different pizza ovens to choose from out there. Now we do uh, the Gosneys, we do the Deli Vitas. Um, the pizza ovens, they used to be just wood fired, but now pretty much all of them are hybrids, which means that they can run on either gas or wood fired. So, you know, if you, it's got the convenience of gas, if you come home on a Tuesday night, you want to make some pizzas, you can turn it on and it's, you're ready to go. Or you can um, use wood and you can get that authentic smoky wood flavor, which, which lots of people which lots of people love the uh the ovens uh they don't take long to get up to temperature now that they, they take normally 20 25 minutes to get up to temperature so they're very quick um and easy to use um, there's lots of content online um about the different things that you can cook on them as well so it's not just pizzas you can cook fish you can cook steaks in there you can cook bread in there lots of different options um, there are portable pizza ovens as well there's new ones coming out all of the time so even though we encourage and, and the majority of the pizza ovens that we do are ones that are big enough to sit on top of a worktop and not be moved you can now get uh, portable ovens like the Deli Vita Diavolo, the, the Gosney Rockbox, um, which can be picked up, taken around, moved, you can take them camping um, or anywhere you like. Pizza ovens are a great social uh, oven to cook with. You have your friends around, you have your family, you have your children. Everybody can get involved in making the pizzas, uh, make their own pizzas, they can cook their own and it's generally lots and lots of fun and it's a great way of getting people together. So the next are side burners. And again, there are a, a large range of side burners available now. Side burners you can get, are you can either have a gas hob or you could have an infrared burner. So the gas hob um, you might use for simmering sauces, sauteing vegetables. Um, you could use them for heating dishes, um, boiling water, frying onions, lots and lots of different things you can use them for. They, are, they come in different sizes, so you can have power burners uh, for, for heating large, large pots. For example, in Indian cooking, um, a lot of large pots are used. Um, you can have double ones and you can have single burners. You can have burners that drop in, so they sit into the worktop. You cut a hole in the worktop and you drop them in, or you can have burners that are built in. And these are the ones that slide in from the front. They normally have the lights at the front and they match the barbecue that are next to. You can also have these infrared burners which get to extremely high heat really, really quickly. And these are perfect for searing steaks and things like that. So next we'll go on to the fridges. So outdoor fridges are really, really helpful. So you can get single fridges and you can get double fridges. The double fridge is not double the size of a single fridge. It is about a third bigger. Um, but they are really, really handy. So it, depending on how far away your kitchen is from your house or your utility room or your indoor kitchen, you know, you may want to consider having one of these. You can keep the drinks in there or keep those cold. You can also keep all your food out there as well. They are designed to sit outside all year round. So when it comes to winter, you don't need to worry. They can sit there in minus 25 and in the summer, they can sit there in plus 40. So they're, they're a really, really good bit of kit and, and probably something that I would recommend putting in, in every kitchen. Next up is a sink and a tap. So if you have the ability to get, uh, or you have the option to get water to your kitchen and you have somewhere that you can outlet the waste, I would definitely recommend having one. It's not essential, but it is handy. When you're cooking, when you're barbecuing, you're constantly getting your hands dirty, you're touching the food, you're opening packets, um, you're wiping things down. So if you have got somewhere where you can rinse your hands off, it is really, really handy. But again, it's not an essential. So if you are close to your kitchen, you can run in there and, and wash your hands. So lastly, we have doors, storage and waste. Um, so it's really, really important to have somewhere to store all your things outside. So firstly, we normally would always put doors underneath our barbecues and this will give you somewhere to store the gas tanks if you're on propane. Uh, you can keep your charcoal in there, some of the longer items, maybe pizza peels, paddles and things like that. Um, drawers are also really helpful and, you know, for keeping your utensils in there, you know, your tongs, maybe some um, kitchen, kitchen roll, um, worktop cleaning products, um, covers for the barbecue, anything you've got really. Um, you can never have too much storage or too much um, space to keep things in there. I mean, we often put open shelving as well in our kitchens where 
where customers can keep glasses and, and cutlery and things like that. So you're not having to run back and forth to your indoor kitchen to try and to try and get the bits that you need. It, it, it makes the outdoor kitchen a completely independent cooking space to save you running back and forth. Um, and lastly is the uh, waste bin. So I always recommend putting in a waste bin. So when you're cooking and barbecuing, there are always packets of food. There's cling film, there's tin, uh, tin foil. There's always something that's going to need throwing away. Um, and rather than having a, a bin bag on the side or, or pushed up against the, uh, the kitchen, uh, it's really handy to have a pull-out bin that you can just chuck all of your rubbish in there. It keeps everything clean and tidy and the kitchen nice and clean. So I hope you found that video useful and it's given you some ideas and some inspiration for any kitchens you're thinking about having. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We try and release one of these about once a week showing you the kitchens that we do. We also have Facebook and we have Instagram. So if you want to see what we're currently up to, we try and post on there a couple of times a week. So head over there and give us a follow. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.